you know what has signified or what has written down testimony. Praise the Lord. Uh, being here alone is a testimony. If we are reading the news, we know the rise in COVID and we know what has been happening all around. Our Father and our God, we just want to say thank you, especially for the gift of life, for the salvation of our souls. Every one of us sitting here, we have a testimony. And we thank you, Lord, because surely our testimony shall keep going in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't shout Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In the last two weeks we've been talking about fear. And uh, we talked about the spirit of fear. Last week we dealt with fear. How do we deal with fear? And if you remember when we talked, when we introduced fear, we said that there are two types of fear. One is an emotion and another one, and that emotion, is, it comes like an emotion, but it's actually a spirit that possesses us. That one is negative. Not possesses us, but has an intention to possess us. And then we have the fear of the Lord, which is a good fear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The fear of the Lord, which is a good fear. So if you have the manual, we are on page, on lesson 20 page 46. And we start with the memory verse. Please, multimedia help us with it first. Proverbs 1, 7. Shall we recite one to go? Praise the Lord. The one I was familiar with is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But you can also see here that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. knowledge. It means if you claim to be knowledgeable and it doesn't have a foundation or basis built on the fear of God, your knowledge is passing away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will tell you why. Scientists have come with all kinds of hypotheses and theories and every now and then to find that they don't stand the test for time. Praise the Lord. Even medical science, today they will tell you, um, what can I remember is now? Sometimes there are some claims that they make and after some years, another scientist will come and disprove it and come up with another one. And you just have to keep updating yourself. Only God knows which is the truth. But I believe that God is just trying to say that the knowledge of man alone is nothing. And is not the truth. Praise the Lord. So for the Bible passage, we're looking at Psalms 111 verse 4 to 10. Please, I want us to all read together. Because please, as you're reading, I'm going to ask some questions by the time we review. So that you have an understanding of the text. Because the text is always very, very important. Praise the Lord. So are we there? Shall we read one, two, go, four to ten? He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. 
he has given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has showed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the living. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Praise you the Lord. So when we talk about fear of God here, is not to be scared of God. I know when they talk about fear or reverence, what comes to mind is respect. Praise the Lord. But here I want to emphasize that this respect is exclusive to God. I would rather call it a holy respect. Praise the Lord. You can see a big man or your boss or your elders. You are expected to respect them, right? Honor them. But this one that you have for God is the deep and great one, exclusive to God. It cannot be shared with anybody. So from the introduction, we are meant to understand that it's a reverential trust of God. When you trust God, it means you know his character and you know that he's dependable, that he's able. Praise the Lord. You trust people that you know that they are dependable, right? And that they are strong enough to do what they have said that they will do. That makes you rest in, their, in trust in them. And this trust that we have for God it is something that makes us to hate evil because God and evil cannot stand side by side. I want to tell you that this fear of God comes from you knowing God. A lot of us treat God with levity because we don't know him. If God should give us a revelation of himself, you will find out that we are like ants before him. Praise the Lord. So that's why it says it's an inward attitude of humble reverence towards God in light of his self-revelation. That when you come to the realization, when God shows you, no one can know him all around. But when he shows you him, himself, what happens is you have a tendency to bow down. You begin to see that you are inconsequential before this God. But a lot of us, we think if we don't praise God, God will be hungry looking for who will praise him. If you don't give your 20,000 Naira offering or 10,000 Naira offering, you think that God will go hungry. It's because we lack a revelation of who God is. Something happened last Sunday. We are preaching. Mommy Pedro and, and some of us were at the back and the word was going on. I said, Mama Pete, your seat is vacant. Come up and sit. She said, no. The word of God is ongoing. That she cannot walk up and sit. I go home, I started thinking that redeem does not allow it. Because I always like any information I get, I like to think about it. And the understanding that came to me is that God and his word are the same. Hallelujah. And if his word is being spoken, Hallelujah. you cannot be nonchalant. You cannot be distracted. You cannot be lackadaisical about it. Because it is God himself standing in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, when you realize it, you know, I showed that. I said, oh, no wonder even some churches, when they are reading the word of God, everybody stands up. It is fear, it's reverence. 
that if God says that he and his word are the same, so your fear of God will come from you knowing God. Praise it the Lord. It comes from you knowing that God is great. That he's omnipotent. That he's omnipotent. He's almighty. That if you put, pitch yourself against God, there's no salvation. There's no help. No, nobody can save you. It is also coming from the fact that God is great and he's good. That this mighty God, you know, another, another definition of that fear of God is when we are in awe of him. When you're in awe of him is when you have a glimpse of his wonders. When you have a glimpse of his wonders and the wondrous things that he does. Praise it the Lord. You know, it's it's like a feel, it comes like a feeling first. Some people will say, Wow, I had goose goosebumps. Oh, I fell on my face, I fell on my knees. It all accompanies the fear of God. Praise it the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's look at Deuteronomy. Why God has commanded us. He commands us to fear him. He's not our mate. Hallelujah. He's not immortal. He's not limited. And he does what no man can ever do. So he deserves our reverence, our fear of him. And he has commanded us to fear him. Let's look at Deuteronomy 6.13 quickly. Want to go. Multimedia. Deuteronomy 6.13. Praise you the Lord. You are commanded to do what? To fear God. It is a command. Please remember it's not to be scared of God. Hallelujah. Now Ecclesiastes 12, 13. It says the conclusion of the matter. The duty of the man is what? Fear God. Proverbs 8, 13. What does it say? Proverbs 8 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate what? Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Praise the Lord. So when you have the fear of God, it will manifest in you hating evil. Distancing yourself from evil. Do you know why? You know that once you move away towards evil, or once you get side by side with evil, that distances you from God. And that begins to set you up against God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why is it necessary for us to fear God? Okay, in conclusion, we should not be scared of God, but see God. But see the fear of God as respect, obedience, submission to his discipline and worshipping him in awe. Can we see that? See the fear of God as what? Please just put that deep and great respect. Deep and great respect, obedience, and submission to his what? Discipline. And also worshiping him in all. Why is it necessary for us to fear God? Because God is holy. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember growing up, when you enter the church, I, I grew up in the Orthodox Church. When people get to the altar, suddenly they become very sober. Right? You see some, they will not pass in front of the altar without bowing down. Is that consciousness of His holy presence? You cannot come in the presence of God or before the altar and you're chewing gum or you're feeling anyhow. You suddenly become, that is fear of God. Because God is holy, we ought to fear him. Psalm 33 verse 8. No, Revelation 15 for sorry. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord? 
and glorify thy name. For thou only art what? Holy. For all the nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgment are made manifest. Listen, a God that all the nations come before him. Imagine yourself. Nigeria is a nation. If I if they place you side by side with Nigeria, do you count? Do you really count? <laughs> then imagine a God that all the nations of the earth they come before him. Who are we not to fear him? This brings out the greatness of God. Praise the Lord. Because he's holy. Um, I'll just skip some. We ought to praise him because he is great. Second Kings 17, 36. Shall we read? For the Lord who brought you. Now, can you see the greatness of God? They said in those days, Egypt was the, the center of civilization. Egypt was so powerful. If Egypt catches you, they bring you under bondage. There is no nation that can free you from them. So all the nations of the earth, they used to fear Egypt. But look at what God did. We all know the story. And one amazing thing about it is that God for two, you know, when God was speaking to Abraham in the book of Genesis, the beginning of Genesis, he told him that your descendants will be in bondage 400 years in Egypt. Abraham, I don't think he had even become a father of nations. I don't know. He hadn't even had Isaac then. God had foretold, come on people, God had foretold what will happen. And he was so precise. They will be in bondage for 400 years. When even Isaac was not even born. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't he worthy of our honor and deepest respect? Praise the Lord. So you fear him because of his greatness. You also fear him because of his goodness. Because of his goodness. 1 Samuel 12, 24. Quickly, please. Shall we read? Consider the great things he has done for you. When you remember. You know, sometimes that word fear keeps, I just need us to reset our mind. When it comes to fear of God, it means being in awe of him, worshipping him in awe. It means honoring him. It means having deep and great respect for him. So because of his goodness, the great things he has done, which nobody can ever do, then also fear him that despite how great he is, God still forgives us. Psalm 130 verse 4. As tiny as we are before him, as thick as the life we have is, like that of a grass, the Bible says, the flower, you see it in the morning and by evening it's cut down. And yet this same God, he could, have, he could have exhibited his power on us, call fire to burn, completely raise us, and just by speaking it was to create another set of humans, but he still chooses to forgive us. Psalms 130 verse 4, quickly. Let's read together. For there is forgiveness. There is forgiveness in God. Anybody who forgives is like his father God. Praise the Lord. So all this show us that we need to fear God. The fear of the Lord is also necessary for worship.
even if we don't read this one, remember what we have read before. He said that, fear the Lord and hate what? Evil. Praise the Lord. It will keep you from sin. How will it keep you from sin? You wouldn't want to beat yourself against the Lord. Now, the interesting one I saw, that the fear of God is hidden in people who administer justice, like judges in the court, magistrates. Praise the Lord. If you look at Chronicles 2, 9, 6, 19, 6 to 9, Lord. Praise the Lord. Because God is a God of justice. And then in governance, good governance, in, an, in administrations, in organizations, where codes of conduct are being put in place and enforced, you should make sure that you do it also in the fear of the Lord. Second Samuel 23 verse 3. Let's quickly look at that. Shall we read? He who rules over men must be what? Ruling in who? So they are like God's um, representatives. Praise ye the Lord. You should do it in the fear of the Lord. Why is it necessary to do it in the fear of the Lord? Because that, know that you are going to do it without being partial. You're going to do it with honesty and fairness. Because that's what God stands for. Uprightness, truth, justice. Praise the Lord. Now, finally, in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, we need the fear of God for the perfecting of holiness in our Christian lives. For perfecting of holiness in our Christian lives. Second Corinthians seven verse one. Shall we read quickly, please? And having therefore this charity, we are in Europe, and let us be ourselves from all the business of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting what? Holiness in the and without holiness no man can see God. So when you submit to the instructions of God and you do the bidding of God, when you honor him, when you go by his precepts, you have the fear of God in you. Praise the Lord. What are the benefits for us? What are the benefits for us when we fear God? Let's look at Psalm 147 verse 11 quickly. Shall we read? No, Psalm 147, verse 11. Shall we read? The Lord taketh pleasure in them that in those that hope in mercy. So what's the benefit here? God takes pleasure in you. And when God is pleased in you, when God takes pleasure in you, you can be rest assured that your life will be a good life. Praise the Lord. Then, the same Psalm 112, verse 1. There's another place, there's, a, there's another benefit there. Shall we read? Praise you the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. So you see now, the person who fears the Lord by default, you're a blessed man. There are blessings that are portioned to you by the reason that you fear God. Praise the Lord. 
So the benefits are number one that God takes pleasure in you and that you are a blessed man. Now the fear of the Lord. Let's look at the benefits as we have in Proverbs 1 verse 7. Quickly. So a good foundation for you to build knowledge upon is to start with what? The fear of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 1, 1, 1 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good If you notice that for every fear of God, there is always that do his commandments or that obey him. Did you notice that? What normally follows once you hear the fear of the Lord is either you serve him or you obey his commands or you do his commands. Praise the Lord. So when you do his commands, it means that you are walking in the word of God according to his principles and his precepts. And if that is the case, you have the fear of the Lord. You truly, truly have the fear. That is, you honor God and you serve him in truth, not just in the word of mouth. It is also a weapon against sin. Remember, we read earlier Proverbs 8.13 that tells us that we should fear God and hate what? Evil. It is a weapon against sin. When you know that you have the fear of God, you notice that you want, don't want to have anything to do with evil. It also brings protection for believers and their loved ones. Proverbs 14.26. Let's see that. Proverbs 14.26. There's another version, I think it's NLT. It says that they that fear God, they don't have anything to fear and their children are safe. Praise the Lord. So by having the fear of God, it comes with strong confidence. Because you know you have God's backing. And if God be for you, who is it that can stand against you? And God goes ahead again because, see, when you, ha when you have a knowledge of something, it opens the grace for you to access it. So if a, fa a parent has the fear of God, it means you're providing safety for your children. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what he's trying to tell us here. It gives protection for believers and their loved ones, their children. Psalm 103, verse 13. Let's look at it. His pity will increase upon you when you have the fear of God. Psalm 103, verse 13. Quickly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as a father pities his children, God pities them that fear him. He has sympathy for them. Even if he had want, when you do some wrong, but he knows that you fear him. You know, like sometimes you make mistakes. Even if he had wanted to raise his hand so high and deal with us, he will remember that we really, really, and genuinely in our hearts fear him. And God will refrain from his action. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the fear of, the, of God, it makes a man acceptable to God. Is in Acts 10 35, but I want to quickly let it bring down the mercy of God. 103 verse 17. The fear of God brings down the mercy of God. Shall we read? For the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that was fear him. Hallelujah. So the fear of the Lord brings down his mercy. He brings down his mercy. And finally, Proverbs 22, verse 4. He guarantees true riches, honor, and life. Shall we see? 
by humility and fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. That's another benefit. You want riches, you want honor, and you want life. Begin to practice the fear of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And let's just talk to God for two, twenty seconds. Ask the Lord to put the true fear of him in your heart. And if you give you revelation of who he is, that will compel your heart to truly worship him and be in awe of him. And to obey him, to honor him, and to serve him and do his, his, his business, his commands. And to esteem him highly above every other. Father, this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are rendering unto God this morning. It's titled Obina Song. As we praise the Lord. May he inhabit our praise in the name of Jesus.
everybody else that can say Jesus has made everything brand new in their lives. Let that person shout hallelujah. Go ahead and bless his name. Thank him for turning things around, for giving you joy, for making all things brand new. Oh, go ahead, magnify his name. Give him praise. Exalt him. Oh, we bless your name. We appreciate you, oh God. Please accept our praises and our thanksgiving. Can I implore us today? Let's be deliberate about it. Let's be intentional. Remember not the former things. Behold, I do a new thing. He's able and willing to make all things brand new, to give you joy. I think he deserves a little praise. I think he deserves a little worship. Give me a brand new life, brand new hope, brand new opportunities. I give you praise. I worship you. I adore you. Please accept our praises, our thanksgiving, our adoration, our fear in the name of Jesus. You deserve all the glory. If he deserves all your glory, go ahead and give him praise. Thank you. Hallelujah. Um, two things quickly before we we'll go into the word of God. Sister Evelyn ref um, referred to the fact that in some churches we understand when it's time to read the word. Who can remember a tradition that we had? Anybody here at all? That when it's time to read the word, what do we do? We stand. We've been doing it for a while. I think it's a good thing to go back to, don't you think? Okay, first of all, how many people remember you took part in that tradition we had? Let me see. Let's shout hallelujah. Hey, it's not like we're making it up now. Can we agree to go back to that tradition? Yes, sir. Many times people used to wonder when it's time to read the word and some people stand and some people are like, I was wrong. We're going back to that tradition. We're going to it's not just a tradition, we're going to stand to honor the Word of God. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was the God, and the Word was God. Amen. Now we're going to take our tithes, if you have your tithes in the house. And while you are preparing it, if you haven't already, I'm bringing it forward. There are a few slides I want to show on first fruit, and I must apologize um, for being negligent in talking about this before now. It's about first fruit. Praise the Lord. And there are a few scriptures that will help you. Hello? Okay, never mind, I have the scriptures here. But I just wanted to share. I imagine they will be up already. There's plenty of time for that. So first fruits, you can look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Proverbs 3, 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thy increase. Exodus 23, 19 says, The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Nehemiah 10, 35 says, And to bring the first fruits of our ground, and the first fruits of all fruits of all trees, year by year, unto the house of the Lord. Many scriptures, I pick a few, you can do the research yourself. Um, it's a good thing to tell God at the beginning of a year that, Lord, I'm putting you first. And we gave an example in the workers meeting. If your salary increases from 10,000 to 20,000, the difference could be a first fruit offering. Praise the Lord. Some people say, you know what? I'm going to make mine a sacrifice. So, first salary in the year, first... Um, prophet, first whatever, as in is God that gives me the whole. So if I honor him with this, it's not too much. I encourage you and I recommend that you do it. And like I said in the workers meeting, there is nothing by the special grace of God that will stand here and ask you to do 
if we don't believe in it and if we don't practice it by ourselves, praise the Lord. You have your tithes in the house or your first fruits, uh, please bring them forward. Praise the Lord. Okay. Let's come forward with our tithes, please. And if you have your first fruits here today, fine. If not, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We have brought our tithes in the appropriate basket, please. Um, where did we put? Okay, I'll just put it here. Sorry, it should be here. Thank you. Praise the Lord, Father. We thank you. Please stay. Please stay, Father. We thank you for every tither in the house according to your word in Malachi three ten. Bless them, fill their storehouses, rebuke the devourer for their sakes. In the name of Jesus. And Daddy, we ask that everyone that is catching the revelation of first fruits do something new in their lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. One more time, let's just bless God for making all things new, even in our lives. Praise the Lord. I said, can we please go ahead once more and thank God for making all things new in our lives. Praise the Lord. Then you may please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Open our Bibles to Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Luke 18, verse 8. And if you wish to start the tradition today, you're welcome to. Luke chapter 18, verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Ask your neighbor, shall he find faith on the earth? importantly, shall he find faith in your house? Shall he find faith in your life? Did they answer? Amen. Hallelujah. Now before you sit down, please ask your neighbor for me, are you a believer? Was there a response? Ask. Hey, it's not, it's not just, I really want to know. Is there anybody that didn't answer? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, I ask because God bless you, may be seated. Some are born again unbelievers. Do you know that? But that will not be us in the name of Jesus. We will not be born again unbelievers. You see, many of us claim to be believers, but our actions say otherwise. And Father, we thank you and commit this precious time into your hands. Please speak to your people in the name of Jesus. Some of us claim to be believers, but our actions speak and say otherwise. And if I'm not mistaken, believe is a noun, right? Is it a noun? It's an action word. Is it a verb? Action. Oh, you don't, yeah, sorry. It's a long time since. Uh, <laughs> it's been quite, quite long. But thank you. It's an action word. Praise the name of the Lord. The dictionary says, Believe is a belief or believing is accepting something as true. To believe is to accept something as true. Praise the Lord. Uh, once we're at capacity, please do not allow anybody else in. I think we have appealed that we all keep to the chosen time frame. Amen. So accepting something as true is a firm conviction. And often the process of a believer's miracle is aborted by our refusal or our failure to believe. A miracle is on the way. And amen. that process is, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We will not abort our miracle by our unbelief amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why? Because we often wait for physical signs 
before believing it. Praise the Lord. Now, one way to tell if somebody believes is if they're thankful or if they're not thankful. If somebody is not thankful, it, there's every reason to guess that they do not believe the word. Praise the Lord. And even when things don't quite turn out the way we expect, they didn't quite turn out the way we thought, we should still be thankful. Because a true believer will always be thankful, will always give thanks. Somebody said that your gratitude will determine your altitude. Praise the Lord. And so we've been talking about flying high. If you don't, if you are not grateful, if you don't have an attitude of gratitude, it is likely your attitude will be very low. That will not be us in the name of Jesus. First Thessalonians 5.18. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks. Even when it doesn't look quite what you wanted, give thanks. Again, Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So it's not looking good, give thanks. Praise the Lord. All things work together. Uh, there are too many stories and the test, I mean, examples we've shared, which I don't really have all the time to go into today. Something may look bad, but God uses it to give you something huge. Praise the Lord. So learn to give thanks. Waiting on the physical signs indicates that we don't quite understand how spiritual principles, or rather how God operates. We don't understand that it is the spiritual that determines the physical. We live in the world now, don't we? How did God create the world? How did he create, how did he do it? He spoke it by his word. He spoke it. It was a spiritual thing. He spoke it and then we saw it. The Bible says that as it, you know, he said it and then it was. So whatever it is we're trusting God for, we're believing God for, let's learn to believe. Let's settle it in heavenly places. And in the interim, before it comes down, let's learn to give thanks. It's no accident that this first phase of the fast, we have been instructed and mandated to keep on thanking God. How many of us are finding it's not as easy as we thought to give thanks? Oh, yes. Before you know it, you want to start saying, Father, please? Ah, then you quickly come back and say, Father, I thank you. And for those that are doing why you, eh, you are doing prayer requests, in a cunning way. I know. Say, Father, I just want to thank you because by the time I get to the office tomorrow, I'll get my promotion. What's that one? <laughs> yes, prayer request. <laughs> thank you, Nambas. <laughs> the spiritual gives birth to the physical. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him, without God, without the word, you can interchange it, was not anything made that was made. Praise the Lord. And if we fail to act spiritually, we may never ever see the physical. Luke chapter 1 verse 45 says, And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance. Tell your neighbor, don't be a doubting Thomas. Jesus said, it is finished. And if you're a believer, you will believe him. And if you believe, then you will give thanks. Praise the name of the Lord. And when you give thanks, you please God. Because we understand from Hebrews 11.6, Hebrews 11.6, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And we also know that Jesus condemned unbelief. We can see it in Mark 16 14 mark 16 14 jesus condemned unbelief he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and he upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not that which they had seen him and said oh he has risen and they didn't believe chief of which was doubt um, um was his doubt in thomas you know faith without works is dead we all know that but when you demonstrate even a little faith, then God acts. Jesus said in Matthew 17, 20, Just if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Mountain be thou removed and cast into the sea. And that mountain shall be removed. Every mountain in our lives has been removed in the name of Jesus. Let me just try to close with a very simple illustration. Imagine there are three guys that needed one millionaire urgently. And they all stood here. You know, and um, I gave a check to the first one. 
And that first one, he's just looking as in, yeah, right, sure thing. He takes the check, but he doesn't do anything, doesn't say anything, just stands there. He can be likened to James chapter 2, verse 26. James 2, 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. He's doing nothing. There are no works because he doesn't believe. So the second guy, don't, don't forget also that God always expects a response. He always expects a response. Maybe that's something you shouldn't you should take away. He always expects a response. So number two person takes the check and says a casual thanks. He's like, okay, is this a gimmick? Is it true? So he starts, so he's like, go to the bank and collect your money. And he's like, are you sure? <laughs> you know, he's not really, you know, he's not really sure. You know what this person can be likened to? James chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. James 1, 6 to 7. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. He's not sure, he's in doubt. But imagine the third person, praise the Lord. That third person grabs the check, starts dancing, saying thank you, jumping up and if I, he probably called him and said, oh yeah, do this, do this, go and check car, go and check, go and call the landlord because the person believes. That person can be likened to Luke chapter 17 verse 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, lepers, Jesus was healing lepers said, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Praise the Lord. So this is how it works. God initiates a miracle. Your response will determine whether the miracle continues or not. If your response is one of unbelief, miracle terminated. God initiates a miracle. If your response is one of thanksgiving, the miracle manifests and the process is completed. I pray that throughout this month, Throughout this year, your response to God will be one of thanksgiving. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And as you continue to give him thanks, this will be a, an unprecedented year of restoration Amen. for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. One thing you must do, however, if you are not born again, you can dance and praise and shout all you like. The prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto the Lord. So if you're here and you have not ever given your life to Jesus, quickly just raise your hand so I can pray with you. Anybody? You want to give your life to Jesus so that when you pray the prayers of thanksgiving, he will answer you. Anybody at all? Just raise your hand so we can see you. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you. We give you praise. We worship you. And we ask that as your people begin and continue to thank you. Daddy, let it be that that which you are proposed to do will be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now let somebody that is thankful shout hallelujah. for years and trust me it can be very difficult to part away with your first fruits knowing fully well that it's all the salary in the month of January and the first food sacrifice and with all the first food increase and with all the things you hear going on on social media but by the grace of God we have been obedient by the grace of God and we have seen the result let's pray for him that his life will witness results in the name of Jesus let's pray for his wife and his children that they will carry the spirit of excellence in the name of Jesus and as he's watering us the Lord himself will water him his roots will never ever be dry in the mighty name of Jesus I always pray for him that as he has laid his hand upon the plow he will not look back in Jesus name and for him and for us on that glorious day when we shall all assemble at the feet of Jesus he shall say unto us we pray well done thou faithful servant Amen. Enter into your rest, and so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, do we have anybody worshipping with us for the first time? If this is your first time of worshipping with us in this church, is with the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Throne Road. 
Can you signify by a wave of hand? Praise the Lord. Okay, we don't have any first timer. Huh? Oh, praise the Lord. services um, on Sundays, 7.30 to um, 9, and we have from 9 to 10.30, you can choose between the two. We would have loved to shake you to, I mean, but because of the COVID restriction, we won't be able to go for that. Um, let's pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word that have come forth this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you especially for sparing our lives, even in this season, even in this time. Father, we are all alive. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you, Lord. As we go, we thank you for everything, Lord. We are in the season of thanksgiving. And we thank you, Father, for everything you have done, you are doing, and you will do. Please accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And let only your name and your name be glorified in Jesus' name. We are ending the first service now. If you have come for this first service, we love you. We thank you for coming. We go into the second service at 9. For the sake of I mean, seat, other people will come worshipping at 9. We ask that um, you drop your offering and um, you, this is the exit. Please um, let's obey and make the seat empty for the ones that will come for the second service. God bless you. As you go, please remember to drop your offering. God bless you in Jesus' name.